so. The new Shrek teaser came out. Wasn't seen that one coming. But that thing got me thinking. What is a teaser trailer? I mean, I, I know what teaser trailers are, but I don't know if a lot of people do. So I decided to look it up. What is a teaser trailer? So one of the answers I got was on Reddit that says essentially it's the trailer for the trailer. Kind of. To me, that's possibly what it's like now. But I don't think that's a teaser trailer. That's just the trailer for the trailer, which I have seen. They have recently, a bunch of companies have recently been doing trailers for trailers. Which is weird. Like, let's not do that. I do not need the trailer for a trailer. I'd like to see the trailer for the movie. But I decided to go look. What do I believe the teaser trailer is? And I have figured out what I believe my definition for a teaser trailer is. I believe my definition for a teaser trailer is just something to show you that the movie's being made. Not exactly coming out, but being made. For example, at the end of a teaser, it could say, like, coming soon. Because there's no exact date given. It could not have any movie footage. Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean teaser trailer did not show any movie footage. And it served its purpose. Just tell you the movie's coming out. And possibly may not reveal a title for the movie. I know s most cases a title would be made. But in some cases, the title's not finalized or not made you could say the shrek 5 teaser doesn't give you a title it could it could just be called shrek 5 but that could just be a placeholder i'm leaning more towards it's called shrek 5 but to show you what i'm talking about do you remember the teaser trailer to spider-man across the spider-verse I didn't think so. Apparently, everyone forgot all about it. But I remember watching it. That was before the movie got delayed. So I think it had like a, I think like a 2022 release date. And then the movie got delayed 2023. I can't remember. But I do remember this. The end of that teaser trailer shows the word part one in the title. Yeah, you know, a little spoiler for Across Spider-Verse. Everyone was so confused it ended on a cliffhanger. I wasn't. I knew it was I knew it was a two parter the whole time. I'm surprised people didn't realize that. I had to ask people about like, hey, you know, there's a two parter for it. I'm glad they didn't keep the part one, part two title, because I think I think there's a statistic of it. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe there's a statistic out there that says if your movie has like a part in the title people are more likely not going to watch it. Like, if it's part one, people might not watch it until part two comes out. They'll watch part two instead. Or people won't watch part two because they didn't watch part one. So it's always that weird double-edged sword, so I'm glad they changed the title. But that can show you what a teaser trailer does. It can give you an old style of trailer. The old, I'm sorry, old style title which we'll get into one of those examples in this video. But I thought, why not? Let's look in to the unique world of teaser trailers. So to get right into this, why don't we talk about Shrek? We were just talking about Shrek 5. Let's talk about Shrek's teaser trailers. So a pretty unique example, obviously, would be Shrek 1. Shrek 1's teaser trailer does show movie footage. But it has an early style logo. It looks close to the one we have now, but it's just pretty unique. But one thing I found interesting about the teaser is the version of I'm a Believer they used. So hopefully you know, in Shrek, the final song is I'm a Believer. It's made by, I think it was Neil Diamond, uh, sung by the Monkees. Uh, I'll do a correction on the artist if I'm wrong. Sung by the Monkees. And then covered by Smash Mouth in the finale. And then covered again by Eddie Murphy as Donkey. 
But something I found interesting is that the version Smash Mouth did is a cover of a different version of I'm a Believer. It's the one in this teaser. Take a listen. Then I saw her face. And then I saw her face. And after that, another teaser trailer I was able to find that's pretty unique is Shrek 3's teaser trailer. Now, this wasn't played in a theater, so something I probably should have mentioned, most of these teaser trailers were at theaters. They were played in a theater, but this one was for the DVD of Over the Hedge, at least for what I found. I don't know, I don't have it. But I looked it up one day. But something that's pretty interesting is that the teaser trailer for Shrek 3 Obviously, like I was saying before, it doesn't feature any footage of the movie. But it seems to entice you with telling you the stories of Shrek 1 and 2. And then it shows you Shrek 3. Which is just, the only footage shown is a still picture of Far Far Away. I'm pretty for sure from Shrek 2. But the interesting part about it is at the end of it, it's unique animation of Donkey. Uh, telling you about why... The number three is significant. Okay, I don't mind. I don't think Shrek 3 is that bad, man. I think it's overhated. Shrek 4 is worse. Not bad. But Shrek 3 is better. Shrek 3 is better. Can't wait for Shrek 5, though. On the topic of teaser trailers that don't show any footage of the movie, let's get into our next topic. You remember the SpongeBob movie teaser? This one is probably a lot more wide known. You know... The one where it's all the people in the submarine, and all of a sudden, like, something's going on, and then, like, water starts spewing in, and it turns out it's actually just Spongebob playing in his bathtub. Yeah, iconic, I know. But, that is a good example of a teaser trailer not using any footage from the movie, and telling you it's coming out soon. But, there's something I need to tell you now. Supposedly, this could be a lost scene from the Spongebob movie. According to this guy. I'll help settle this question. No, I don't think this is a lost scene. It's just made for the teaser. It is very reasonable to have footage made exclusively for a teaser trailer. Or just a trailer in general. But, you know, don't want to cause beef with this guy. But, I just want to put my two cents in and say, yeah. It's just footage for the teaser trailer. I mean, have you seen the normal trailer for the Spongebob movie? I don't remember the scene where David Hasselhoff flies out of the water like a dolphin in the movie. But, that's just a Spongebob movie. But, I'm thinking, what other teasers could exist? Glad you asked. Because, even though this is the only teaser trailer I could find for the Spongebob movie, there are other teasers for some other Spongebob movies. Now, probably should mention this, not all teasers had to be a trailer. Sometimes it could be like an internet post, like when Sony said Spider-Man 4 is going to come out. That's a teaser, technically. Uh, what Marvel and Disney do uh, when they announce their plans for their cinematic universe, those could be teasers. Because those aren't technically set in stone. But the thing I want to talk about is the posters. Oh yeah. Teaser posters are just as important than teaser trailers. Because sometimes you don't want to make a trailer. That's fair. Teaser posters are easier. Can't accidentally reveal too much about the movie if you don't make a trailer for the movie. And so I want to look into it. Do you guys know what the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water teaser looks like? It looks like this. Yeah, really nothing special. The Spongebob movie 2? Eh. I mean, it's a teaser alright. But look at the date. 2014 release date. That makes you wonder, when was this teaser first made? Because... The movie came out in 2015. But this 2014 release date possibly tells me two things. One, they initially planned on a 2014 release date, but it got pushed back. Or two, uh, they were just thinking that. 
uh, nothing was planned out yet, and so it didn't really matter too much what date you picked. But that show's always unique because the SpongeBob movie 2 is called the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. But this says SpongeBob movie 2. Which, okay. But do you know about the third SpongeBob movie? Yeah. I don't think you do too much. The SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. Now, what was the teaser for this movie? I forgot what convention it was revealed at. I think it was Comic Con. I could be wrong. I'm going to try to look it up and I'll try to put the correct answer in. But I can't remember. I'm just going to think it's Comic Con. But just for the sake of me not to correct myself, I'll just say a convention showed it. Now, this is Sponge on the Run. What's a SpongeBob movie? It's a wonderful sponge. Let me tell you. That was the teaser for the movie before it got delayed. Yeah. So, originally, the SpongeBob movie 3 went through a lot of development problems, uh, a lot of different concepts behind it. I could actually get into a video on it sometime later cuz it is an interesting idea on how the 2016 election helped change uh, the course of the SpongeBob movie 3. Yeah, I know it is does sound crazy as it is but it's a wonderful sponge it was announced and that was the post this is the teaser poster and then after that i think the movie got delayed i believe that's what it was i think this movie's supposed to come in 2019 2019 or 2018 i'll have to check but then 2020 it was, the date was changed for the spongebob movie it's a sponge on the run now, that could probably be the reason you've never seen it before. 2020. It was never released in America in theaters. Canada, I think it was released in theaters for a short while. But a bunch of other movies actually uh, suffered the same fate of 2020. But something that was always unique, other countries, they put it straight to streaming on Netflix. But America, Spongebob wasn't on Netflix. Spon uh, America was waiting for Paramount Plus to come out. They were hyping it up that that's going to be the streaming service Spongebob's on. And so that's where the movie was going to be on. But other countries got the Spongebob movie 3 before. So what did they do? Well, they pirated it. They brought it over to America. Why? Well, they could have pirated it. Or, if you have a VPN and go to another country with Netflix, you could just watch the movie there. Yeah. But those are the power of teaser posters. They can show you early versions of the movie. I mean, have you seen the teaser poster to Son of the Mask? A 2004 release date and no title. Man, think about that. But if you want to look more into that, Jamie Kennedy, the guy who plays the main character in Son of the Mask, he has a full-on uh, playlist of videos talking about the original version of Son of the Mask and all the stuff that went wrong in the production, all the corporate meddling that happened, and the original intentions for the movie. It's a pretty good watch. I'd recommend you watch it for yourself if you can. But, yeah, that's something that's always interesting. Teaser posters can always reveal so much about a movie, even though it wasn't like a trailer. It was just a small little picture can create the biggest effect. Do you guys remember Rugrats Go Wild? That was the third Rugrats movie where they did a crossover with the Wild Thornberries. Well, there's actually a teaser for it in Charlotte's Web 2, Wilbur's Great Adventure. Uh, I think it's some live action movie. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but eh, I've never watched it, so don't care too much. And also never knew this. But something interesting about it, that the teaser for Rugrats Go Wild and that was called Rugrats Meet the Wild Thornberries. So, what's so special about this compared to all the other teasers I just said with different titles in it? Well, this one's unique because this shows you how far along it was in development. Because when it was Rugrats Meet the Wild Thornberries, for starters, that was just a working title. That wasn't going to be the finalized title. Because originally it was going to be a TV special. That's right. But apparently from 
the Lost Media Wiki, it states that the, all the test screenings were just so good that they decided to cut out all the uh, uh, commercial break spots and release it in theaters. So, I don't know how truthful that is. It is true the movie was supposedly cut, but we don't know what originally was cut. Because it's going to be a 90-minute movie, which is weird if it was a TV special. Why would it be around 90 minutes? Usually, uh, Nickelodeon TV movies aren't that long. Like, maybe an hour, maybe an hour 30. But usually, they're never really that long. But... I find this interesting because since it was all about that and had the old title going for it, how far along in development was it and before they made the teaser trailer? Because the teaser obviously has new footage in it. They were not going to show any footage because I don't know what footage was complete yet. Obviously, they wanted to get the big thing out of the way. The girl from the Wild Thornberries forgot her name never watched too much is talking to spike so that already sets you up to what to expect for the movie which is a good example for teasers don't need to show any footage for the movie but a big thing that might happen show it there and so that's always something interesting i figured out that looking through all this stuff how far along in development will you be in before the teaser trailer comes out and also how far along will it be until like the actual title gets shown? Because as we see here, that's just the working title. So how far along development did they get to go finalize Rugrats Go Wild? That's something always interesting that I just like to keep in mind anytime I see teaser trailers. But with that in mind, another teaser trailer that had an old title is uh, I don't think I need to give this movie an introduction, is Return of the Jedi, originally called Revenge of the Jedi. So, originally it's going to be Revenge of the Jedi because it was all about Luke Skywalker getting revenge on Darth Vader and the Emperor, but uh, it was close enough in production that the teaser trailer... And I think some teaser posters actually were released for it. But later on, they changed it to Return of the Jedi. But that's just always something interesting that it'll, that something like this for teasers can change so quickly. And we just sort of kind of have to forget about it. And for something like Star Wars back in its heyday, like, I'm surprised not a lot of people knew it was called Revenge of the Jedi. I, I didn't know it was too until i started looking into it that's just so interesting for something like star wars just to quickly change it like that and then well for some reason people have forgotten about the old title one's just a true testament on star wars itself because if people forgot the old title then you know mission successful but that's just always unique that we can see in a teaser how far along development a movie is and it can be widely shown or it can be just shown a little bit but just to be able to change its perception like revenge of the jedi to return of the jedi and then people don't remember revenge of the jedi anymore that's just to me it feels like a true testament to how star wars can do stuff and its cultural impact that it could change something and people won't seem to mind for something like that. Obviously, people care about the special editions, but that's just always interesting to me that that's something Star Wars could do and doesn't really, no one really cares about it. So that's always pretty interesting. Now, do you even know what Dragon Wars is? So... When I was real young, I had this DVD. I think my brother got it, but it was called Dragon Wars. Colon. D-Wars. That's the full title, technically. And it's always funny when I tell people that. But what is this Dragon Wars? And what does this have to do with the video? Well, there's a long history to Dragon Wars. 
But what I can tell you is the movie came out in 2007. This isn't a teaser poster. This is a poster for it in 2002. Now, you can see it's called the Imugi version. Fun fact. The snake, giant snakes in the movie are called Imugis. So all of them should be the Imugi version. But that's besides the point. The big thing is, this movie took five years of development just to make it. And what does it show? Well, it showed it took a long time to make it. But that's a story for a different time. I actually want to make that a video. Talking about the development of Dragon Wars, colon D Wars, and see just how how it changed and how we got to this point. But yeah, that's always just interesting. Seeing a poster, and this doesn't look like a teaser poster. This looks like a movie poster, like the poster you release for a finalized movie. Like uh, this doesn't look too much like a teaser. So, that's always interesting to show how far it's gone in. And that's just always something that's fine unique. And also, watch Dragon Wars. The movie's fun. At least I like it. You know what these slug monsters are? Neither do I. But they're in there. And some of the dragons are called dinosaurs. Look at the concept art if you find it on DVD, man. It's going to be fun. To help end this video, I decided to take a look at something I like. Let's look at some Godzilla teasers. Yeah. Godzilla fan. I'll do this. Why not? Because this is a form of teaser chair you may not have seen before. So, when Godzilla movies are coming out in the 90s to 2000s, uh, the way they did teaser trailers was a little different than how a lot of these teasers were even done. Word titles involved somewhat uh this first teaser though i will say the title is there this is the teaser trailer for godzilla final wars but what you're noticing is no movie footage except for the previous godzilla movie right here is footage from godzilla tokyo sos which is pretty interesting but the one that is most interesting is this teaser trailer so as you can see, this is the teaser trailer for Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. This was in 1993, and there's no title for the movie. All it is just lists it as a number, which is pretty interesting. Imagine if like, Marvel did that, if like a new Avengers movie coming out, or like a standalone movie, and instead of just saying it's like uh, Black Panther or Captain America Civil War, they'll just say, MCU movie number 15. MCU movie number 16. Would that be good? Me? No, it wouldn't be good. But that's just interesting that the Godzilla did this. But what's important about the Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla teaser, it's what right after it. Take a listen. First American production. Dynamic Hollywood filmmaking. Groundbreaking visual effects. All new American version Godzilla. How's that? That was the teaser for the unmade 1994 American version of Godzilla. Obviously, that version of Godzilla turned into the 1998 Godzilla. But that was after a script rewrite happened. But this, this is proof of the 1994 version. That's how much faith Toho put in for that version of Godzilla. Just so they can make a teaser of it. They made the teaser of it because of how far development was going on it. That concept art and models were being made. And they were beginning to do cast. But then uh, I think it was like a $100 million budget at the time. Um, which was a lot back then. 
that's what made the TriStar realize, like, hey, I don't think we can't really fund this. But that's how far in development they were that Toho said we'll make a teaser for it with a 1994 release date. So throughout all these teasers, it all comes down to uh, dates being different and possible early versions of production. Now, that's not the design that Stan Wentz was going for for the movie. This is what he's going to look like. And what you just saw in the teaser, that was just a stock Godzilla image with a red paint over it, just so it's generic enough. But think about that. That is a lot. That is an unmade movie that had a teaser of it. And that's just what it could have looked like. And that's just fascinating to me that even when movies are unmade, there can still be a teaser poster for it. That's just incredible to me. But, man, what an incredible teaser trailer that was. And, who knows? There could be other teaser trailers out there with some unmade materials in it. But, who knows, man? Who knows? And so, there we have it. That was a look at some teaser trailers that I thought interesting and just wanted to show you guys about. And just to tell you what, a teaser trailer could do and so with that in mind thank you for watching and tell me what do you guys think about these teaser trailers did you know what was the difference between a teaser trailer and a theatrical trailer before watching this video or do you have some teaser trailers you want to show me want to tell me about that you think i forgot let me know in the comments below like do you like the video dislike you dislike it and i'll see you on the next one tucker out